If you were to take 90% of the graduating students of the mm. colleges of the United States and ask them what a bank or a banker does, what percentage do you think would answer to your satisfaction? Hardly any. <laughs> <laughs> Yet they have all been exposed to oh, banks, yes. bankers, yeah, economics, yeah. and professors. Yeah. How many of them would know what an executive does? Well, that is extraordinarily difficult to explain, you know. That I know from my own experience. I mean, the business school are doing quite a good job, but the economic students know nothing about it. The, the ignorance of people about the things they vote about mm is, of course, very depressing. Uh, well, the, the feeling that one must temper one's disillusionment with the fact that mm. these are very complicated. Mm. And to utter a heresy, not all people are intelligent. Mm. <laughs> and you run into the problem of what the fate of a democracy will be when the crises become more acute and depend on more technical signals, to use your word, or information to use mine. Well, I'm very pessimistic about this. You see, my concern has increasingly become that we call democracy a system in which uh, it isn't really the opinion of the majority which governs. It's the necessity of paying off any number of special interests. And unless we change the organization of our democratic system, Democracy will disc I believe in democracy as a system of peaceful change of government. But that's all its whole advantage is no other. It just makes it possible to get rid of a government we dislike. But the, the omnipotent democracy which we have is not going to last long. And uh, what I fear is people will be so disgusted with democracy that even they will abandon its good features. And, uh, if you if you had uh, magical powers and were to set about restructuring the system, uh, a friend of mine, in making a witticism, prompted me to retort by saying, that's a good rule. Let's pass a law that for every law that Congress passes, it must simultaneously repeal 20 others. 20 others, yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least 20? <laughs> but what would you do? Oh, uh, in the long run, the only chance is to alter our constitutional structure and have no omnipotent single representative assembly, but divide the powers on the traditional idea of a separation of powers, have one which is confined to true legislation in the sense of general rules of conduct, and the other governmental assembly being under the laws laid down by the first. The first unable to discriminate, the second in consequence being unable to take any coercive action except to enforce general laws. Because the present system, see, I believe Schumpeter is right in the sense that while socialism can never satisfy what people expect, our present political structure inevitably drives us into socialism, even if people do not want it in their majority. And that can only be, <coughs> be prevented by altering the structure of our democratic, so-called democratic system. But this is not necessarily a very, very slow process, and I don't think that an effort towards reform will come in time. So I rather fear that we shall have a return to some sort of uh, dictatorial democracy, I would say, uh, where Democracy merely serves to authorize the action of a dictator, and uh, the system is going to break down. It will be a very long period before uh, pure, uh, real democracy can re-emerge. <laughs>